Next, we look into some of the tools that have been developed using this simulation based ATPGs approach. The first one is Contest, it was uh, way back in 1989. So, it uses a two stage process. The first stage it aims to detect as many faults as possible. So, naturally, fitness function is given by A into number of faults detected plus B into number of faults excited. So, this, uh, mm, this is the fitness function for the individuals that we have. So, this was the, the that was used. So, initially uh, since we are trying to detect as many uh, faults as possible, so that was the uh, fitness function. So, it does not talk about uh, the faults which are detected multiply by different test vectors. If for individuals, if, if an individual may be detecting large number of faults, but they might have already been detected by some other patterns as well. So, um, these are the problem. The second stage, so the, the first at the end of first stage, we will achieve some amount of some rate of fault coverage, but there will be a number of faults which are uh, not uh, detected because they are hard to detect faults. So, this uh, the second stage, it will aim to detect the remaining hard faults individually. Now, the fitness at this stage will depend on if the target fault has been excited and how many fault effects are in the circuit. So, these are the uh, this is the fitness function for the second stage. So, it, it, it is targeting only the hard faults, uh, it targets one fault and try to generate individual in that direction. And uh, for uh, so, if whether the target fault has been excited and how many uh, uh, fault effects have been excited in that by that pattern. Okay. So, that way we get the fitness of these individuals. Another one GA test which was uh, reported in 1994. So, this is a this is a GA based ATPG for sequential circuit. So, it uses tournament selection uniform crossover that we have discussed previously. The first phase it talks about initializing the sequential circuits. Second phase it detect and excite as many faults as possible. Third phase similar to phase 2, but to monitor fault free and faulty circuit events. And the fourth phase the individual now becomes sequence of vectors and now we aim to detect and excite as many faults as possible. Now you see that is a sequential circuit. So, first is the sequence a sequence circuit in a sequential circuit initialization that is a big challenge. So, the set of patterns that can initialize uh, uh, the sequential elements to some values. So, they are important. So, which are the what are the uh, patterns that can initialize this uh, sequential elements to some distinct value. So, that is the fitness function for the first stage. Second phase the objective is to detect and excite as many faults as possible. So, this is similar to the previous one uh, of this uh, the previous test pattern generation we have talked about. The third phase it will monitor fault free and faulty circuit events. So, how many faults are new faults that are getting detected and uh, how many uh, fault uh, what are the fault free operation and what is the faulty circuit operation. So, between uh, how many of them are different. So, that though that is that comes as the cost function and the fourth phase now for sequential circuits we need to apply a sequence of vectors. So, we try to frame the sequence ok. Now, so the, the, the individuals they are sequence of vectors. So, and then uh, the for the for a particular sequence what are the um, patterns what are the faults that it can detect and excite. So, this is the fitness function. So, actually in the fourth phase is does the sequential ATPG in the previous stages. So, it is similar to the combinational ATPG. There are uh, some approaches to improve the quality of this uh, solution, uh, solu this uh, GA solution uh, produced. One possibility is to seed the initial population. So, wh what we have said previously is that the initial population is generated randomly, but if, if random initial population generation. So, the problem is that it may not have many good solutions in it. So, as a result uh, the evolution becomes a question. So, that way uh, uh, in the in, uh, under evolution it may not generate a good number of uh, individuals, a good uh, types of individuals with of different varieties. So, what is required is that apart from this random individuals, we also need to put some non-random individuals in the initial population. So, what can we do? So, we can use some other algorithm to generate some non-random uh, patterns and those non-random patterns they also become part of the initial population. So, remaining patterns are generated randomly, but these uh, non-random patterns uh, are generated by some other uh, uh, say deterministic algorithm. So, this can reduce the number of generations needed for the GA to obtain a good solution. So, convergency rate will improve definitely. 
and this has been used by this particular tool called straight gate. So, it targets individual faults rather than group of faults and seeding of propagation sequences and seeding of justification sequences. So, what it does is that um, uh, for, a, for, for a particular line to be uh, uh, just, uh, uh, for a particular line to be justified to be put say uh, particular line uh, we want to get the stuckard 0. So, that line has to be set to 1. So, for that purpose what is the input sequence? So, that input sequence is made part of some individual uh, or some uh, solution. Similarly, for propagating one fault to the primary output, so some primary inputs are uh, required to some uh, required to be set to some value. So, that particular setting becomes part of some individual. So, that uh, it uh, the, the in the individual that we have, so it the chance of detecting that fault becomes more. So, that way those those type of varieties are introduced into the population. So, that uh, this uh, generation and propagation, so these are uh, facilitated within the individuals in the population. And then when it evolves, then possibly uh, this, uh, this will remember that this, uh, the, this will be able to uh, capture this intelligence that okay, uh, this way I can propagate the fault or this way I can excite the fault. So, that is actually uh, taken care of uh, in by this process. So, apart from this random testing, this uh, this uh, sequence, this uh, uh, feeding with this uh, uh, non-random patterns. So, this uh, helps a lot in the evolution process. Then for delay testing, so uh, we can have this uh, delay defects, uh, but the stacker delay defects are the uh, faults that are occurring for, for, um, that affect the functionality when the circuit is running at a high speed. So this is there because uh, this is the delay of various parts. So stacker fault model is insufficient to model all delay fault models, and for delay fault model, we know that there are several models: a path delay fault, transition fault, segment delay fault, etc. But this uh, this uh, type of simulation based ATPGs, so they are not very good for uh, doing this delay testing. So actually, for delay fault testing, so we need to have uh, a different type of test pattern generation. Okay, so the uh, first we'll uh, look into the path delay fault. So path delay fault, it models a combinational path in the circuit, and it considers uh, so uh, any you find out a combinational path in the circuit, and then consider the cumulative effect of delay along the path. So uh, what is the total delay? So if there is a transition at the input of the path, then how much time that uh, transition takes to propagate to the output. So, if it is actually if it is within a reasonable delay, okay, then it is reasonable time, then we say that the path does not have any delay fault, but if it is not within that, if the transition reaches after that, then we say that there is a delay fault and this particular uh, we can find a, a particular input pattern that can excite that delay fault and we can see the delay fault at the output. Now, for a path, so there are set of on inputs that is the inputs which are uh, which are affecting the gates which are on the path and there are some off inputs of the path. So, they are not affecting the path, they are feeding the other inputs. A transition is launched at the start of the path and a test must propagate the transition to the end of the path. So, that is what I was talking about. So, transition will be launched at the start of the path and it must come to the end of the path and to other inputs are to be set to some proper values to facilitate this process. So, they must be put to some values so that uh, this transition propagates uh, through the uh, through the path to the output. So, there can be two types of faults associated with every path, one is called a rising transition, another is called falling transition. So, these are the two types of delays that can occur, rising delay and falling delay they are normally not same for any log logic gate. So, they are to be taken separately. Now, the problem is that the number of paths can be exponential to the number of gates in the circuit. So, if we if from the primary output, if we backtrack and try to uh, look to the primary input, so there, can, there are innumerable number of paths and as the size of the circuit grows, so number of paths will also be uh, very high. So, even if for a um, if particularly if there is a fan out in the circuit somewhere in between, then the number of paths will increase even further. So, that way uh, there is normally this number of paths is going to be exponential to the number of gates in the circuit. So, we need uh, two types of ve two vectors for testing this individual delay faults, one is called uh, initialization vector and the other is called launch and capture vector. So, initialization vector will set uh, the, uh, so if we are trying to for example, trying to check a rising fault at some point. 
then first of all the point has to be uh, uh, has to be set to a low value a logic 0 value. So, that requires the initialization and after that we have to give input so that this part particular point sees a transition from low to high. So, that is the launch and capture vector. So, we need two vectors for testing any uh, path delay fault one is the initialization vector uh, the, uh, another is the launch and capture vector. Now, this path delay faults they can be classified into three categories one is called statically sensitizable uh, path another is called uh, the single path uh, sensitizable faults another is called false path. So, in sense is statically sensitizable case all of inputs of a path p can be assigned to non controlling values by some vector. So, what it says is that the apart from the path sub all the all the inputs which are not affecting this path they are off inputs of the path. So, they can be set to some non controlling value so that they do not uh, affect the propagation of this transition from the uh, from uh, the uh, transition point to the output. So, they can be set to some non controlling value. So, if we can do this thing then such a path will be called statically sensitizable. Similarly, single path sensitizable. So, uh, so, it says that all off inputs of a path can be set to non controlling values for both vectors of a test. So, they are for both the vectors we can set the values. So, that the this uh, this off inputs uh, can be set to non controlling values and there is a false path if a transition cannot propagate from the start to the end of the path. So, naturally uh, if the if it requires conflicting setting for the primary inputs for the transition to propagate from start to end. So, that is a false path. So, not all necessary off input values can be set to non controlling values simultaneously. So, in this case uh, the path is a false path. So, this path cannot be tested for the delay fault. So, this is statically unsensitizable path because this path a b c e. So, if we want to uh, set the value. So, this uh, this uh, first uh, this is a. a uh, so, we are uh, we are uh, trying to for check for this transition that is the, the, the high to low transition for a b c e. So, this is uh, making this transition high to low, but for making this high to low. So, these are the uh, respective transition. So, this is uh, unsensitizable this is unsensitizable because for whenever this transition occurs. So, all the uh, all the inputs of all the inputs are also making transition. So, the it is we cannot uh, we cannot uh, make other inputs to some proper value. So, that this transition can proceed okay. then there is robustly testable path. So, single path sensitization is uh, too stringent because single path sensitization tells that all off inputs are to be set to some proper values because, uh, but a robustly testable path says that we may not need to set all off inputs to non controlling values in V 1 in order to propagate a transition. So, you see that here I am trying to uh, I am trying to test this particular fault. Uh, so, this is line B uh, for this path. So, it is going for a high to low transition, but when it is going from high to low transition initially I have to set the line to high. Okay. So, when I set the line to high so, I can uh, this line a and this uh, this, li this line a need not be set to be any value. So, this can be x whereas, this line c has to be set to 1 always. So, this is uh, solid 1 or so, uh, fixed 1 that will be required, but this a line did not uh, for, for v 1 the first vector this b line is uh, 1 c line is 1, but this a line need not be set to any value. So, this this does not require setting any value. So, that gives us flexibility and then when it is propagating. Uh, so, and the second vector for the uh, transition vector of course, we have to have uh, this um, uh, this um, a value also set to 0. So, that will be required, but for v 1 it is not required. So, this type of situation this is known as robustly testable path. So, we do not need to set all the off inputs in the v 1 vector as well. So, if a path is robustly testable then the corresponding test can verify the correctness of the path irrespective of other delays in the circuit. So, this is a result that can be proved that uh, so, it can uh, so irrespective of other delays in the circuit. So, we can test this path. Now, what is the value criteria? So, when the corresponding on input of p has a controlling to non controlling transition like say this is an OR gate. So, this when the OR gate is 1 uh, input is 1. So, output is controlled by that input. So, it is having a 
controlling to non controlling transition you see. So, what it says if it is a controlling to non controlling transition the value in the first vector for the off input can be x with the value for the off input as a non controlling value in the second vector. So, what it says the value of the off input can be x ok. So, for the first vector. So, you see for the first vector. So, I have uh, uh, I have got x for the first vector I have got the other value set to x and it says that off input uh, uh, the in the second vector the off input should get a non controlling value. So, you see for the off input for the second uh, 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 for the second case that is for v 2 b is equal to 0 and this will also this should also assume a non controlling value. So, this has got a 0. So, this is one rule value criteria for robust testable fault. Similarly, when the transition is non controlling to controlling transition. So, it is for OR gate it is going from say 0 to 1. So, that type of transition then the values of off input must be steady non controlling value for both the vectors. So, this uh, case is that. So, this is one AND gate. So, so what is happening is that it is going for a transition uh, 1 to 0. So, non controlling to controlling transition is there for this gate. So, the second uh, rule the p input has a non controlling to controlling transition then it says the values of off input must be steady for both the vectors. So, steady non controlling value. So, this uh, uh, sorry. So, 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 this um, c input for both the cases. So, it is held at 1. So, for AND gate 1 is a non controlling value. So, since it is making a controlling a uh, non controlling to controlling transition. So, I should maintain the other input as steady one for both the vectors. So, this gives us the rules by which we can assign values to the uh, uh, input lines or input lines of various gates to uh, so that this uh, uh, the fault can propagate. There is another uh, class of uh, path which is known as which are known as non robustly testable path. So, not all paths are robustly testable. So, it is uh, not that we can do the robust uh, robust path for all the cases. So, we can relax the requirement for V 1. So, we say that the test is valid if circuit has no other delay faults. So, if there is no other delay faults in the circuit then even for non robust uh, uh, path uh, testable path also. So, we can generate test pattern. So, this is a path which has got uh, for which for which we are interested and this circuit does not have any other delay faults ok. So, we are interested only in testing this particular delay fault. So, in that particular case, so we do not need to consider other cases. So, we can we can apply this uh, transition from low to high here and this uh, this uh, a line remains a steady one ok. So, this is uh, mm, controlling to non controlling transition. So, this line remains at steady one and accordingly it uh, propagates to the output. So, non robust uh, test only valid if no other delay fault is present in the circuit and value criteria irrespective of transition on the non on the on input the value in the first vector for the off input can be x with the value of the off input as a non controlling value in the second vector. So, first value can be x and the second value can be a uh, second value has to be uh, non controlling value. Now, for the having this ATPG for this path delay faults, how to generate this uh, path delay faults? So, we can use some algebra, ok. So, this algebra it consists of uh, uh, several new symbols. So, like S0, so S0 we say that the initial and final values are both logic 0. So, basically, what we are trying to do is we are uh, talking about two vectors. The first vector is the exciting vector, and the second vector uh, is the uh, launch and capture vector. So, this we can talk about that initial so the S 0. So, both in both the vectors the value is at logic 0. Then S 1 both initial and final values are at logic 1. U 0 initial logic can be unknown. So, it can be either 0 or 1. So, it does not matter, but the final value must be 0. Then U 1 initial logic can be either 0 or 1, uh, but the final logic must be 1 and x x both final uh, in initial and final values are do not cares. So, we can use this algebra to consider both this uh, both the vectors v 1 and v 2 simultaneously for generating test patterns through the ATPG techniques. Now, we can define the Boolean operations over this algebra. So, this AND 
so s 0 so s 0 um, so whenever it, it is static it, it is uh, 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 fixed at 0 okay so both s 0 means both are fixed at uh, logic 0 so you see that whatever be the uh, other input so it this will this will remain as s 0 so it will already remain 0 similarly u 0 so this is a first part first point it is unknown and next it is 0 here first point it is always 0 so that this will be s 0 similarly unknown 0 this will be unknown so otherwise this is that these are all unknown 0 similarly s 1 and s 0 so this will be s 0 u 0 so you can find out uh, this uh, particular boolean operations and operation or operation by taking this individual uh, vectors uh, separately so you can uh, define what is the uh, uh, vector what will, what will be the output of this and or not operations now there are several uh, algorithms for this uh, at, uh, delay fault atpg there is a recursion based path delay fault atpg resist so starts at a primary input and then it performs a depth first search through the circuit along each path and for each path it generates a test so since it is doing a depth first search so many path segments may get merged after some time because of this fan out and all that so naturally it, it saves in that path. So, up to that point it has go, got a uh, test pattern and that is that can be extended further. So, this type of recursion based path delay fault uh, ATPGs have been reported. Another type of uh, fault delay fault which is uh, quite common and it is uh, mostly used in the um, in industry also is that transition fault model. So, what, uh, what it assumes is that there is a large or gross delay present at a circuit node. So, one particular circuit node has got very large delay. So, what happens is that if, a, if one particular node has got a very large delay, then the other points, other uh, uh, delays in the circuit, they become insignificant. So, as a result, so uh, with the uh, only, uh, uh, so what uh, the whatever effect comes, so this is basically due to the uh, large delay that is present with that particular node. So, irrespective of which path the effect is propagated, the gross delay defect will be late arriving at an observable point. So, basically that, that will be that is going to happen. Most commonly used in the industry, simple and number of faults linear to the circuit size, because uh, if, there, if there are n nodes in the circuit, then all these n nodes may have some uh, large uh, delay. So, as a result there are n uh, faults okay. and this also needs two vectors to test. One, uh, one is called node x slow to rise x str slow to rise it can be so another is naturally uh, slow to fall okay so slow to rise is uh, uh, so this can be modeled using two stuck at faults okay in the first time frame we uh, we put it x uh, first time frame we want that x should be at 0 okay so we are trying to check for x uh, uh, we, we want to put the line x to 0 so, if we have a stuck at fault uh, generator ATPG for stuck at fault uh, stuck at faults, then we can ask that ATPG to generate test pattern for x stuck at 1. So, it will put the line x to 0. So, I have my first part is sol uh, sol uh, solved. Now, in the second part, I want that uh, the now this x value should become 1, and that can be done by applying a test pattern which, which can detect the fault x stuck at 0 because it will try to put a 1 at that point. So, this is x stuck at 0. So, the first we need to uh, the in the first time frame we, we, we apply the pattern corresponding to x stuck at 1 and the necessity is that it must uh, it must excite the fault. So, we do not need to propagate the fault to the output at this point of time. However, in the second time frame I want that x stuck at 0. So, that fault has to be excited and propagated because if this is the circuit if this is the circuit and at this point I want to uh, uh, do that x str slow to rise. So, initially from the primary input I have to do something so that this point becomes equal to 0. So, this uh, effect need not be propagated to the output because I do not need to see the output now, but after that I want to uh, put this line high. So, I, I, I want a low to high transition. So, initially I have uh, made the line low and now I need a transition to go to high. So, I need to apply a pattern so that this line is forced to 1, this line is forced to 1 and in that case I would like to propagate this effect to some primary output so that I can see that uh, what is the delay in the process. 
So, by using this uh, uh, ATPG for, for, for stuck at faults, so we can generate this transition fault patterns as well. So, a transition fault may be launched robustly, non robustly or neither. So, this is a typical result. So, here there is a there is an example of this slow to rise at the output of OR gate. So, this OR gate output, so this slow to rise fault we want to capture. So, for that pattern, so you see that we can we apply uh, some ATPG, so that first it makes this uh, line stuck at 0. Accordingly, the test pattern is generated which will make this line high and this line will be maintained at 1. These are the two primary inputs and after that, it will be, uh, I will generate this ATP, I will run this ATPG for generating a stuck at uh, 0 fault at the output of the OR gate and the stuck at 0 fault. So, it will uh, try to put a 1 at this point accordingly, it will uh, it will make this line low and this line will continue to be 1. So, this way using this uh, stuck at fault ATPG, we can uh, generate the test pattern for transition faults. A transition fault may be propagated robustly, non robustly or neither. So, that is also that is also another property. So, slow to fall at output gate A. So, this is basically uh, say, uh, so this output, so this is slow to fall we want to get. So, first we make it 1 and then we try to uh, get a 0 there and then uh, by, by using the similar method that we have discussed. So, it, it can, it, so it is propagated basically in a uh, um, in a in a robust fashion where this path has, has been put to put to some proper value. So, transition fault testing with stuck at ATPG. So, simply treat each transition fault as two stuck at faults and it can test it with in a, in a broadside skewed load or enhanced scan. So, there are various types of uh, um, uh, this uh, launch capture methods uh, by which we can uh, do this scan testing. So, all of them can be used uh, for the transition faults as well. There are certain properties of this uh, stuck at fault uh, chaining, so the chaining of the stuck at vectors. So, suppose I have got three vectors v i, v j and v k and uh, out of them we form two vectors v i, v j and v j, v k. Then we can come up with a result that says that the transition faults detected by v i, v j and uh, v j, v k are mutually exclusive. Why? Because v i v j any transition fault any say slow to rise or slow to fall transition fault this will uh, put v j the v j will take it to some value in the first pattern. In the second case if it also did the second pattern also detects this fault then the requirement of setting uh, of that particular line by v j in this and this. So, they are contradictory because if it is a say a slow to rise type of fault that is detected then v i has put it to 0 and v j has put it to 1. Now, if this pair also detects that particular fault, then v j will put it put the line to 0 and v k will put the line to 1. So, but v j uh, that is the contradiction like here v j is making it 1 and here v j is making it 0. So, that is the contradiction. So, it is not possible. So, any pair of uh, vectors that will always detect some mutually exclusive set of transition faults. So, if you have got a set of uh, um, uh, sequence, if you have got a sequence of uh, this uh, vectors uh, for this uh, stuck at vector, uh, stuck at vectors, then you can just uh, you just make two two pairs, okay? Two consecutive ones makes a pair. Uh, so that way, if you do it, then you you can detect a large number of transition faults as well because each of each pair will detect some mutually exclusive set of uh, faults. Next there is bridging fault, we will do it in the next class.